and welcome to day 17 of the Atlantic Hurricane season, day 35 in the Eastern Pacific and we have a new invest in the Atlantic 93L um, which is very close to the Nicaragua-Honduras border at the moment and uh, may have a little bit of um, maybe forming very briefly before striking Belize and then moving on to the uh, southern Gulf of Mexico. 30% chance on that one at the moment. Um, we also have Invest 91W which has already been named by the Philippines Imong uh, and 92W in the Western Pacific as well in the South China Sea um, which is likely to strike China probably or move towards the northeast maybe. Um, we'll have to see how that one pans out but 91W is the one that we're looking at at the moment and that one's expected to develop into a tropical storm now a high chance of uh, development on that one at the moment as it heads northwards and um, we also have 93L here already a medium chance on this one in the Atlantic a 30% chance by the National Hurricane Center at the time of innovation and the storm is hugging the coast at the moment so we're not going to see anything very quickly or at least it's unlikely uh, but if it manages to distance itself just a little bit away from the coastline there there may be some chance of, chance of formation for that one uh, and the Indian Ocean things looking quiet here at the moment as they usually do around this time of year things quietening down there are two peaks in the Indian Ocean really early on in the year and then a bit of a larger peak towards the end of the year towards October November time uh, but let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures now. You can see the eastern Pacific still warm near the coast, um, which may play into the hands of storms that may develop quite, a, uh, quite uh, rapidly, intensify maybe over those waters. Um, not too much to say about the Atlantic, fairly moderate temperatures around here. And um, in the South China Sea and the Philippines, still very warm waters here, 30 degrees or more, especially where 91W is going to end up very soon if it, when it continues towards the north, which it will do according to the forecast and to the computer models and everything um, expected to move towards generally an, an, um, a north north westerly direction currently with winds of 25 miles per hour 1004 millibars and is expected to perhaps curve towards the uh, northeast around two days time as it passes the uh, Japanese chain islands and then perhaps affecting the mainland of Japan um, in three to four days time and then sweeping up towards the northeast uh, maybe causing some rain and flooding concerns over in Japan itself um, especially if it does develop into a tropical storm. We have Invest 93 here as well, 30% chance of development. Uh, what we can see of the models at the moment aren't really hinting of development just yet, but they might not have picked up on this uh, new development of this system. But what we can see of it is that it's probably going to move into the Yucatan Peninsula and then perhaps into the southern Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche area as well. Uh, so let's take a look now at the Western Pacific region. You can see here around the Philippines, you can see both Invests. Invest 91 over on the right, Philippine name Imong, no public si uh, warning signals are raised in the Philippines at the moment. And we have Invest 92W which is off to the left which uh, there's much less of that one at the moment so I don't think we'll see that one intensifying or developing anytime soon. And here's Invest 93L in the Atlantic, you can see Central America here. Uh, the Honduras-Nicaragua border, which is where the storm is, the centre of the storm is just lingering offshore, um, very close to the shoreline, and that's why we probably won't see much development just yet. But a 30% chance over the next 48 hours, this storm might develop if it moves out to sea just a little bit more. Looking at the model runs, then the CMC doesn't uh, really uh, hint at much in the Atlantic, but you can see at the end of the run here, two Eastern Pacific. Um, systems forming. You can actually see that one of them, um, the larger one, consuming the smaller one at the end of that run there. Uh, the ECMWF predicts another system, uh, a system forming at the end of that run in the Eastern Pacific, quite a broad one as well. Uh, maybe an intense storm in a few days' time, perhaps, you never know. Um, and that one's going to curve out to the uh, uh, west northwest uh, by the looks of it at the moment. Obviously, it's very speculative because the models are um, obviously long range and quite uh, inaccurate known to be in the past of course. Uh, the GFS not much developing on that one at the moment. The NavGem fairly similar as well. Uh, not too much in the way of storm development at the moment except for one or two little small disturbances that probably won't get very far in the eastern Pacific there. Let's take a look at the overall predictor season scores then for June the 17th so far. Obviously um, no change because no new storms have formed, no new intensity changes. That may change in the next update uh, with the current situation. But as it is, uh, Ken remains in first with 108, Typhoon Bob with 101, and Hurricane Melissa 20 with 99 points. That's the top three at the moment. You can submit your own storm totals at the website, force13.com forward slash interactive. 
And then by pressing the 2013 predictor storm button that will take you straight to the submission form where you can submit your own terms which is certainly not too late at this stage um, as it's open till November but of course the earlier you predict the better uh, the more points are up for grabs at the moment. 93 available as of today. Uh, June the 17th on this day then a lot of storms forming and dissipating in the eastern Pacific uh, but Brenda also formed near Florida in 1968. Uh, but we had Bud forming, Carlotta forming, Depression 3 forming, Bud dissipating in 1982, uh, Depression 5 forming in the Pacific, Christina forming and Blast forming in the Eastern Pacific on this day on June the 17th, um, or quite a while ago as well, the 70s and the 80s there. Uh, Tropical Depression 1 turning post tropical in the Atlantic in 89, Tropical Storm Arthur forming in 1996, Storm Bud dissipating in the Eastern Pacific, uh, Tropical Storm Allison turning post tropical in 2001, Blanca forming in the Eastern Pacific, Depression 2 dissipating, Blast forming in the Eastern Pacific in 2010. And Typhoon Guchor peaking as a Category 4 storm in the Western Pacific on this day last year, June 17th. Um, and don't forget you can track any storms that form, including the ones that we're tracking at the moment, on the Force 13 website, force13.com forward slash storm tracking. We'll take you straight to the storm tracking pages and then you can go delve deeper by basin um, to take a look at what's going on in uh, your area of interest, any information that's relevant. Um, any warning information as well uh, when that becomes relevant and uh, of course a graphical uh, tracking map which um, is quite convenient and hopefully quite well put together um, I'd like to hope so uh, and don't forget you can follow Force 13 on all the social mediums that we have that would be uh, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter just search Force 13 you should find us fairly easily and um, don't forget to show your support by liking, favouriting, subscribing, following and anything else that you'd like to do to support Force 13, anything it is greatly appreciated. And I thank you very much for it, and I hope you enjoy these videos. So, as well. depending on what happens in the Western Pacific, there might be a new uh, video update during the day tomorrow, um, UTC. But uh, failing that, there'll be covered all information, all storm. Um, information around the world will be covered again in the uh, next tropical weather bulletin number 21 number 22 rather this is number 21 uh, number 22 that will be coming up tomorrow june the 18th that will be tuesday uh, hope to see you there